All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This is a webinar about succeeding on the job, using technology to boost the skills employers want. My name is Sarah Giffen-Hunter. I am an assistive technology specialist at Pacer's Simon Technology Center. And my name is Paul Sanft. I'm also an assistive technology specialist. And we're going to be going through this together here, going back and forth. And the uh, plan for today is to do a quick intro about CTD and PACER. And then we're going to do an overview of assistive technology and how it can help, succeed, help you succeed on the job. And then we're going to go through a bunch of demos with AT that will support the skills employers want. And these are, I believe, the eight areas that we have identified as key and central to almost all um, jobs. So we're going to, we have our demos divided up into these categories. So a couple of tips um, to, for, to get the best experience possible from this. Um, we, we have placed all of the participants on mute so we don't accidentally pick someone else to pick up someone else's microphone or phones. Um, so um, one way to communicate with us, uh, there is a chat window you'll see on the right, and um, Bridget is working here with us to answer any of those questions that might come up. So absolutely do, um, do be engaged, ask questions. Uh, we, we love to be able to answer those. And um, if you have any difficulty hearing us, um, consider using headphones. We, uh, we found that gives a little bit better results. So. Um, absolutely give that a try. Um, of course, if you have any other technical difficulties, you can throw that right into the chat window as well. So, um, CTD is the Center on Technology and Disability. And I just want to uh, give a little shout out for their website. There is a wealth of information there. And it is um, documents, uh, research papers, all kinds of um, articles that are written in the library. There's also webinars, both archived and live, like this one. And then there is also an e-learning section that has online courses. And I have here on the slide just a couple um, resources that I highlighted that are related to the transition age. And just a quick um, reminder, you'll notice in the bottom right corner, there's a couple of files that you can download. Um, we have this actual PowerPoint presentation. You can access that um, so you have your own copy. And we also have a handout that goes with it. It's more of a condensed, non-PowerPoint version of this information that we're presenting. So make use of, of that window in the bottom right there. Um, you can download those files and get access to some of these links and things. So um, real quickly, um, if you're not familiar with Pacer Center, that's, that's where both Sarah and I are working out of. Um, we are a, a, parent cent um, a center that's for parent training information uh, for families of children and youth um, with all disabilities. Um, and specifically, we work in our Simon Technology Center, which is a project of Pacer that's um, all about um, showing the benefits of technology um, to, to assist um, children and adults with all sorts of disabilities. But we have a lot of other projects that we work with. Um, feel free to uh, check out our website, www.pacer.org. You can learn all sorts of different things that we do there. Um, you can check out us at the Simon Technology Center as well. Okay, so we want to talk a little bit about what assistive technology is. And this is a definition here that is from the IDEA um, legislation. And so it's kind of a formal definition. But assistive technology is anything, item, piece of equipment, product system, that is purchased or modified or even created on, on your own that is used to increase, maintain, or improve the functional capabilities of a person with a disability. So you can see on the screen there are things as simple as a pencil grip. No, <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, the next screen is low tech to high tech, which is why he was jumping ahead. Um, but you can see um, you know, things as simple as a pencil grip to help someone that has difficulty with writing, to an alternative mouse, and then all the way to like a braille typewriter. And um, yeah, we'll go ahead to the next slide. <laughs> 
So this is the AT continuum. And on the left end, you see the low tech all the way to the high tech. And the low-tech items here, it has the pencil grips again and also a magnifying glass, are typically things that are inexpensive, might be pretty easy to find, and very little training is needed. And then there's a big range in the middle that's medium, um, might be like an electric stapler that would help someone that can't physically um, use a stapler. Um, and it might cost a little bit more, and there might be a little bit more involved. But then when you get over to the high-tech end, it's usually more advanced technology, um, such as uh, the one in the picture, the alternative augmentative communication device, or obviously like an iPad or a computer, and, and then all the technology that goes with that. So it may be more involved and may more requ require more training or time to get up to speed on using it. So in, in regards to that continuum, I think it's, it's really important to know that assistive technology um, can fall anywhere along those. A lot of times when people think of assistive technology, they think of uh, maybe some really fancy devices or things, um, but it doesn't have to be super fancy. It really comes down to an individual's needs. And specifically, we're going to look at things and how they relate, uh, relate to the workplace. Um, and so in the workplace, uh, a lot of times one of the first things you're dealing with is access to the physical environment. A really common thing there is ramps or elevators for, uh, for wheelchairs, um, but also access to the actual information and tools you're going to be using, so computers and, and all that. Um, but then ultimately um, looking at independence in the workplace and creating that productivity. Uh, a lot of what we're going to look at today are, are various apps that you can use, um, as well as a couple of devices uh, that can, can help with all of these things. And I think what's really important is when um, talking about success with assistive technology, um, it's important to consider these different categories here. Um, obviously, you have to know what's available, and that's what we're trying to accomplish right here by addressing the different things that are out there, but also take into consideration um, the strengths and limitations of the individual that's using the technology. That seems like it might be obvious, but if you don't take it into consideration, it's going to be a lot harder to be successful in utilizing something. Um, and, and identify what are the actual job tasks that this individual is going to need to do um, and, and how, that a, how that AT is going to assist with it. Um, if you're not taking those things into consideration, you might find a tool that you think is really cool um, but just might not work for these um, particular situations. So it's important to take those into, into account. And then also the, the training that's involved. Um, the, per the user of this technology, are, is there a lot of training that goes into learning how to use it? And more importantly, or, or maybe not more importantly, but equally as important, are your coworkers, supervisors going to have to learn something too? So it's really important to consider those. And then, of course, maintenance. Is the device something that takes regular maintenance? Is it really complicated? So looking into those things is going to make a really huge difference in your success rate. Um, as opposed to just thinking what's there, think about these other things too, and of course funding, how, how is that going to be paid for? So with that, we'll go ahead and get started, right, with looking at some things. Um, and uh, Sarah will take it from here, looking at um, uh, an app for having a positive app. Yeah, so the first thing um, that employers often, always want, is having a positive attitude. And so that, um, we think, probably begins with getting enough sleep. So this is a app that is called Sleep Cycle. And now you should be able to see it on your screen. And this is pretty amazing. Um, you can load it on your, on your smartphone or an iPad. And it actually works by being on the bedside stand next to you. And um, it does, the, it uses sound and movement to sense your sleep cycles and tracks them. And then actually chooses within a certain range. Um, here, I'll go ahead and show you on the app. It says here, wake up between 7 and 7.30 a.m. And then it is using its data to choose a point at which you are in a lighter sleep um, cycle. Uh, a more shallow one, and you, and then the, the research shows that that allows you to wake up more easily and feel more refreshed. So um, what I do here is I hit start, and it has a little reminder about where you need to put it, put your device.
and now it is starting to um, sense. So I'm not going to be able to show you, obviously, what it does in the morning, or, but you can see just as I'm talking, it is sensing um, the sound. And I think it also seems to sense like the breathing. So it has whatever you know, information built into it uh, to track the um, sleep cycles that you're in. And so that's how that works. I'm going to stop it. And let's see, there we go. There are a couple of settings, um, obviously regular things on alarms. Um, like choosing what sound you get, but there's also, um, you can choose how large the window is during which it would choose to um, wake you up and things like that. So that is called sleep cycle. So along those same lines, um, maintaining a positive attitude. Um, there's a lot of different types of apps that deal with stress and anxiety, um, particularly for maybe a young individual who's um, working for the first time. You know, stress can be a, a very real thing, and someone who's been on the job for a really long time, uh, for that matter, stress can, can really take its toll on your productivity. And so we have a handful of different apps that can work um, to assist with that, the first one we're going to look at is called MindShift. I'm going to switch back over here. Let me get focused on here. So MindShift is the one right up here in the top left. I'm going to open this up. And you'll see right away it has a, a couple of different options. But in particular, what I want to look at is My Situations. So open that up, and you can hit Add a Situation that you want to manage your uh, stress with. So you can see things like um, making sleep count, um, coping with test, test anxiety, manage worrying. Um, and when you open these up, um, you can add that as a situation that you want to address. And it walks you through different steps in dealing with that uh, particular challenge. Um, so here you can see it's giving you a couple of different facts about that. Um, if I go hit next at the bottom, I can move on to the next step. Um, gives you a little video of someone um, telling their story as well as um, some facts just specifically about that. And moving on, it also gives you an assessment. So it a it's asking you specific questions about um, your level of worrying. And from that information, um, it gives you different recommendations on how to deal with that, dealing with uncertainty, um, challenging worry, worry thoughts, and things like that. So here there's a couple of different things that you can um, address in dealing with that. Um, and then ultimately it gives you a couple of what they call chill out tools, um, different exercises you can do for relaxing like calm breathing, um, different visualizations, um, different mindful strategies and all that. So it is a very active device. There's one more step on here um, to put in your active steps, um, things like moving around and things like that. But it is a very active um, app, so it does uh, take some, a little bit of time to set up, but then it walks you through these different things to be successful in managing your stress and anxiety. Uh, it's been really successful for a lot of people. Um, and then um, moving on to another app that you know, deals with some of the same things, we're going to look at Pacifica. So Pacifica is right next to that right here. Um, and this is all about mood in particular. Um, it has you know, more of a, a fancy user interface on here. Um, but it's, it's set up, one, if you click on this mood thing here, it's going to ask you right now, what is your current mood? How are you feeling right now? And you can choose anywhere from great, very good, all the way to you know, awful, um, setting that up. And then from that, you can take an action. How do you want to deal with that? Um, do you want to go through some meditation options? Do you want to go for a walk, uh, work on thoughts, um, depending on where your energy level is? It's really interesting. And it's all about guiding someone through and helping them become aware of what their mood is, which can be an important pa factor with uh, managing stress. And here you'll see over on the bottom, just to the right here, there's a meditations option. So there's actually um, different times 
items that you can do. So one minute deep breathing, 10 minute uh, peaceful soundscapes, um, one minute positive visualization. So all sorts of different tools you can use to help you with that, that stress reduction. Um, and then um, the last thing on here is, is actually a wearable device. It's called the Spire. And I'm going to bring it up over here on the camera so we can see it. Let me switch it back to the camera. I'll move the iPad out of the way for a moment. And you can see um, the device here is very small. So right now it's on its charger. And I'll just take it off right here. It's a wireless charging thing. It's pretty cool that way. Um, but this thing is just a clip-on device. It goes, it's very similar to uh, Fitbit in style. It clips onto a belt loop or a waistband. Um, and then it connects directly with the app on your phone or iPad. And if I bring that app up here, we can see the type of information it gives. This one's not paired at the moment, and it ha is the one we use for demos, so it doesn't have any data in it yet. Um, you'd have to wear it for some time. But you'll see it'll give you things like how many minutes a day have you been calm? How many minutes have you, or have you been focused or tense? Um, active or sedentary. And this is all based off of this device um, manage, um, monitoring things like movement, similar to how a Fitbit works, but also your breathing. Um, so one of the things that it's showing here, it's not paired at the moment, but you can see my average breath per minute is 14. Um, so it's going to show you if you're above that average or below, so you know if you're maybe a little bit stressed right now or, or if you're more relaxed. Um, and then there's also a couple of boost items that you can do um, to you know, spend 30 seconds working on calm, 30 seconds of uh, focus, uh, meditate, energize, things like that to help you with those. It's, just, it's a device that's really easy to put on. It, you forget all about it and it tracks you throughout that day and you can get some insights into your stress levels. And that can be really, really helpful for individuals who struggle with anxiety and stress. Um, just just knowing where they're at throughout the day is, it can sometimes be half the battle. So we found this can be, be really successful using that device. So, and then moving on a little bit more from a positive attitude, um, is arriving to work on time. I think um, everybody who's ever worked at a job can agree that um, Arriving to work on time is a very crucial part of success. Um, so alarm clocks obviously exist, um, and there's a ton of different apps for that. But one in particular that we want to look at is called the Alarmy app, and it's really interesting. I actually have it on my own personal phone, and, and I, I use it from time to time. And I'll, I'll switch back over to the camera so you can see how it works here. Um, so how this does work is here's the app right up here. I'll brighten it up a little bit here. And oh, I'm using the, the free version. I'm going to say never ask again here. But so the way you set it up is you hit add an alarm, just like you would any old alarm clock app. And you can set the time, um, how often it repeats, the default sound, all that usual stuff. But here's where it's different, the alarm off method. So if I choose that, um, the default is just turning it off. But that doesn't make any difference from a typical alarm. But there's another option called take a picture, which is really cool, um, where it forces you to take a picture of an object. So you can have uh, like a picture of your bathroom sink. So in order to turn off the alarm, you have to get up out of bed and into your bathroom and take a picture. Otherwise, the alarm just keeps going. Um, and that's a really cool feature. There's also um, another one called math problems. Now this one is um, not for the faint of heart, uh, but basically it, in order to turn off the alarm, you have to solve three math problems. And you can set how many specifically you have to solve. You can set their difficulty. Uh, if you go to hard, you're just asking yourself for trouble there, because here's an example of the problem that you need to solve. Uh, that is not, not easy for everybody. Um, if you set it too easy, well, then that's not going to wake you up. But um, it's, it's a really interesting thing. And the alarm does keep going. So uh, make sure you set this to a point that's, uh, that's reasonable, but it is, it is going to wake you up. Um, so it's all about forcing you to move, use your brain to get you up out of bed so that you don't, um, so that you don't just go back to bed and hit snooze. It can be really helpful for a lot of individuals. Um, oh, but then beyond that, arriving to work on time, there's 
all sorts of tools built into whether you have an iPhone or you use an Android device. Um, if you use an iPhone, you're going to work with Siri. If you use an Android device, you're going to use something called OK Google. Um, I'll just use my phone real quick right here again. Um, but I can just say something like, OK Google, remind me to check my email when I get to work. And this thing okay. is... Do you want to save this? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so it's now saved that. And what's really interesting about this is when you get to work, it uses the GPS to know you're at work, and it will remind you to check your email or whatever task you have to do that day. Um, but in particular, the one thing I wanted to show is Google Maps. So Google Maps and trying to arrive to work on time, um, if, a lot of people might be familiar with the general features of maps, but it does give you a lowdown of how busy traffic is and things like that. But if you enter a workplace into your, into your, your settings, it'll actually give you a reminder. So you see here it's telling me my ride home is an hour and one minute. It looks like traffic is getting pretty bad. Um, so it's giving you a constant reminder of when you need to leave. In the morning, it gives me that same information of when I need to leave for work. Um, and then. If you want to get really cool, you have an option for um, uh, transit options. So if I just did this um, travel home, it tells me specifically what buses I need to take and at what times and things. And um, if someone is uh, using public transportation, this is a great option um, to get a quick snapshot of the fastest and, and different options for public transportation. So that was just looking at just your built-in reminder options um, and using Google Maps. And it looks, I just got a reminder that I have to check my email because it knows I'm at work right now. Um, but it, it could be a really, really great built-in option that, that's easy to utilize and it gets to know you as well. It knows your habits and it reminds you, hey, you typically leave at this time. Shouldn't you get going? It's pretty cool. Okay, so I've got a couple more apps related to arriving to work on time. Um, the first one is called Wonderlist, and it is just basically a to-do list kind of app, but I'll show you how I have it set up for morning time um, reminders. And then the second one is called TimeWinder, and it's more of a visual um, reminder for a morning routine. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, <coughs> switch back over here to my iPad. This is Wonderlist right here, and I have it already opened up here. Um, to a list that I have entered. Um, uh, oh, right, so getting ready to go to work. These are all the things I would need to take to work with me in the morning. And so I could open this each morning, and I could go through the list and say, OK, I have my wallet, and check it off. And oh, it even gave me a little noise. And I have, OK, and I go and I get my water bottle, and I check it off. And what tools do I need today? All right, got them. And so I can go through the list. And each morning, um, if I need that kind of support, then it will help me make sure I have everything that I need before I go out the door and head to work. So that is just one way that um, we thought of that you could use Wonderlist uh, to support going to work. And then the other one is called TimeWinder. That's this one right here. I'm going to open that one. And let me go back a bit. So I've got here a morning routine, and this is a free app, and it's unfortunately, um, or this is the free version, it's going to show us this little ad to buy it and this little advertisement. Um, okay, so now we have this like a timed morning routine, and there are photos, and I just, um, I'll go ahead and start the timer. The first thing would be to take a shower, take shower. So this has um, a photo, plus a timer, plus um, this is text that I entered, and then also the audio um, cue that I hopefully you heard when I started it. It reads whatever the text is. Where do you get the photos from? So these photos I just got online, but what's really nice about this is that you can take photos with your device, your phone or your iPad, um, and you can use photos from the, the person's actual environment. And so you could actually get you know, more granular than this and, and break it down to even more steps. Um, 
Here, I'll go on to the next Get one. Dressed. Um, so you could include more lengthy instructions or more visual um, cues Get if you need it. And then as you see that I'm doing here, then if they get done sooner, then they can just advance on to the next step. Brush teeth. So I like that one because it has a really nice visual and audio cues. And that is called Time Winder. Okay, so the next um, feature about performing well at work is communicating well with others. And we have an app and then a device that we'd like to show you. This app is called Quick Cues, and this is the communication module. And they have a number of other modules we'll kind of talk about a little bit later. Um, but this is like their um, uh, base module that's all about communication. <clears throat> so here we have quick cues and I'm going to open up communication and this is a pretty basic straightforward app um, let me get it ready here um, and it really is about giving like it said quick cues really short um, basic cues and in and, and this um, module it's basically about communication conversation so um, if someone has this with them and they could be doing this you know before they head off to work for the day and they want to be prepared to think about what am I going to talk about this is making friends but so these are general um, communication um, kind of tips People like compliments. Best topics of conversation. And then, you know, this is kind of helpful if someone needs this kind of um, support. Topics to avoid. Starting a new conversation. And so that was just one um, set through there. Like here's talking with coworkers. I'll just flip through that one. Um, and so I like how clear the directions are. And um, talking with people I work with is different than the conversations I have with my family and close friends. <clears throat> and then it gives specific tips. So it's not a fancy, you know, uh, app, but it is for people that need those really basic kind of cues and reminders. And this one is all about communication. And that one was called Quick Cues. So the other thing we're going to look at is, is actually a, a wearable device. It's called um, Active Vocal Wear. And I'm going to go grab the device here and I'll bring up the camera. So if we look at this device here, I'll bring it up in the screen. So how it works here is this is actually a microphone. Um, really, I mean, it's, it's said to be an amplifier. This can clip on, um, it uses, you know, magnetic here thing to clip on to either, you know, the shirt or, or someplace. I've even found that in some cases it works to put it in a shirt pocket. Um, if it goes in you know, pants pockets, it's maybe not going to pick up enough sound. But what it does is it picks up the sound in the room, um, and then you just plug your um, earphones of choice, oops, there it is, your earphone of choice, um, and it magnifies the sound in the room. So um, if hearing is a challenge of yours, this thing will just magnify everything. You know, in some cases, in you know, large, loud rooms, it's maybe not going to be the best option. But um, in smaller settings, maybe in meetings, it can be uh, particularly helpful. Um, and you know, it's it's not it, it's not terribly um, stand outish either. I mean, it's it's going to be noticeable, but it's it's not too bad. Um, you can see it's you know about this little bit bigger than a um, silver dollar here, but 
Um, that's called the active vocal wear, um, really simple device for magnifying sound. Okay, so the next um, resource we want to talk about in communicating well with others would be related to like writing and emails. And this tool is called Grammarly. And um, we're not actually going to uh, take the time to do a full demonstration on this, but we do um, recommend that you go on YouTube and watch a, there's like a one minute video that demonstrates it really well. Grammarly is an extension that you can put on Chrome or other um, web browsers. And what's really powerful about it being an extension is that then when you activate it, it is basically scanning everything that you type and looking for spelling errors or contraction errors and even looking at your grammar and also suggesting um, better grammar or better ways to phrase things. And um, so I have it on my work computer and um, it's kind of nice. It just gives you a little, you know, basically like an autocorrect. You go down and say yes. And so that is one way to help support people that um, might need that in the workplace. Yeah, and I know a lot of email um, apps will, you know, tell you if words are spelled wrong or give you suggestions on grammar, but this goes just a little bit more in depth and it really dives into how you could improve your grammar. It gives you definitions on the proper spelling of the words and things. So it really, and it's always running um, uh, in, in the background, so it's, it's pretty cool that way. So the, the next area we're going to look at is all about being organized being organized and managing tasks. And one thing you'll notice as we go through here is some of the things we've already looked at will be relevant to this as well, being organized and managing tasks. So we talked a little bit about, uh, I briefly showed reminders on, on my phone where you can just you know, say to Google or Siri, remind me to do this thing. Um, in some cases, um, a watch, uh, a smart watch can be a great option for people too because it doesn't get lost in their pocket. It's always uh, attached to them. And we'll, we'll have a short demonstration of that a little bit later. Um, but what I want to look at is this app called Toodle Do. And it's, it's a checklist app, um, but it's, it's a little bit more robust than, than your average checklist app. So I'm going to go back over to the camera here. And we'll go find Toodle Do. And so what you see right away, let me get this focused for everybody. Here we go. Um, so what you'll see right away is there's a very long, uh, or right now, a list of different items, and it's categorized into different categories. Well, <laughs> categorized into categories. Um, and so you see here, you see different priorities here for importance. This is importance level 11. This is importance level 10. This is important level 8. And it goes on, it uses importance based off, one, how you prioritize something. So you can say this is a star item or this is a very high priority item. Or it can also look at the deadline. So that it says the due date is coming up soon. So it puts it a little bit higher on that priority list. So it's, it's really a great way to help people with prioritizing. So it's not just a matter of creating a checklist. Once you have the checklist, being able to prioritize what you should do first um, can make all the difference in being successful with that checklist. Um, so you can see here over under priority, you have a top priority item. There's one right now, four high priority items, uh, a couple of low priorities and things like that. But you can also look based off its due date, um, what to do tomorrow, nothing, um, five things are overdue, pay no attention to that. <laughs> and then um, the next 30 days there's a couple things and, and so on and so forth. So, so it's a really great way to, um, oh, I hope I wasn't covering that up. Um, were you able to see that? Okay. Um, yeah, so I'll open up this algebra worksheet here. And you can see it opens up to the side. It shows you its priority. Um, gives you a, a little note on what you're supposed to do. Send this to Mr. Simon in the email. Um, giving you an alarm one hour before. Looks like it's already happened because we're running late on this algebra worksheet. Um, and, and it also tells you how often to re repeat this thing. So you do have a lot of control over these individual items. So if I bring up check email here, you can see high priority about one minute before it happens. Um, every weekday it should remind you of that. And there are other settings down here that, uh, depending on how intense you want to get into it, um, 
You can uh, look at specific notes that are saved and, and come up, and you can also set outlines. Um, and this, is, this takes a little bit more uh, time to set up, um, but uh, you can set up outlines and work in a project setting. You can actually share these with other people who have the same app. But for the most part, uh, we tend to see this basic task list is really where some of the biggest uh, uh, benefits of this come from. There's one more item with um, habits. Um, things you can work on, like exercise and floss. I, uh, it tells you if you're doing well or if you need improvement. Looks like I need improvement in both those areas. Um, and, um, and then, of course, just your, your basic list, like a shopping list and a reading list and all that, that you can customize yourself. Um, so it gets really, really robust. This is one of those things that it is going to take a little while to get a, a feel for it, um, but I mean, when you put in the time, um, that itself can, can help you be more successful. So um, the next area we're going to look at um, is in, what's that, or the same, same area, but the next thing we're going to look at is still um, dealing with being organized and uh, managing tasks. I want to look at Google Keep and Evernote. Um, pretty, uh, they're pretty helpful tools here um, for tracking things. I'm going to switch back to the, to the iPad here. And I'll bring up Google Keep first. And with Google Keep, it's one of those um, things that you get free if you have a Gmail account. So if you have a, a gmail.com email address, then you automatically have this included with it um, that's, that's connected to that email account. Um, and when you first look at this, it's basically like a, a snapshot of sticky notes. It, and um, it, it's all about taking notes, but it, it displays them in kind of a sticky note form. So if I look way down here, um, I can create a note just by, you know, take note, I just push uh, in there, and it brings up an option to type in my note. So I can say, do something like um, reply uh, to email. And you can say specifically what it is. And um, once that one's done, um, you can go back. And here it is right there, reply to email. Um, if I think it's a really important item, I can pin it up here. And then we'll see it stays up here with the other pinned items because it's um, a particularly important item. You see here I have an ongoing grocery list. Um, and you can also do things like Take a picture of something. Um, here, this is um, a, a stand that we're actually using currently to hold our, our phones. Um, and you say, hey, buy one of these for work. Or you can take a picture of, um, here we have an example, took a picture of the copier code. So if I'm trying to connect to a printer and I can never remember the name of that, I have it right here in my notes. And that's accessible to any device that's connected to your Gmail account. So, so it is cross-device syncing, which is, which is pretty awesome. Um, and then, of course, if we also go here, if you don't want to just take a regular note, you can set it up to do a checklist. Um, or you can do, click this little icon here, which allows you to use a stylus and actually write your note, um, which can be really helpful for people. Um, or let me go back here. Or you can hit the microphone here, and that will let you, allow you to um, speak the note. Remind me to do this thing later. And there it's added it to the note, and it also keeps the recording of that in case it doesn't transcribe it perfectly, um, which I think is another really helpful thing. Um, and then, of course, here's that picture one that we saw. I hit that, and it allows you to take a picture with your device's camera. So, so that is, um, that's uh, Google Keep, and it comes free with any type of um, Gmail email address that you might have. But along those same lines of taking notes, there's also Evernote. And I've talked to a lot of people that have heard of Evernote but haven't really taken the time to, to learn what it does. Um, well, it's note-taking similar to Google Keep, but it has just some extra features and extra robustness, um, if you will, into it. And it's set up by organizing into things called notebooks. So right now I can see all of my notes. Um, but I can also look at the different types of notebooks. So I have a notebook here on a report I'm doing on, on the Gray Wolf, um, something on Simon Tech, which is us here, um, and so on and so forth. So you can actually create your own notebooks 
and save those notes that way. So instead of having them just laid out um, uh, kind of randomly or recently like Keep does, it gives you that more control over, over organizing those devices. And you can star them, and um, the search feature is what's really, really powerful. Yes, Google is really good at searching too, but this has got a really awesome search feature. You can search for your, your items. Um, and let me go back to my notes. And it has the same option where you can add a picture in there. You can record a note, write a note, all those same things. And, but one thing I also really love about this, and we won't be able to display it on this option, but you guys can check it out for, for yourself, um, is it has the, uh, if you go to their website, um, the Evernote web extension actually allows you to um, uh, what's called clip a, a website. So if you're doing research, so here's an example. I was doing research here on, on Minnesota, um, and I found a website at Wikipedia, and I clipped it from my browser, and now it's showing up in all of my devices, and I can research that and go back to the website. So if you ever find yourself doing research and having a ton of tabs open and wanting to remember where you were, you can use this um, clip thing to organize them into specific categories. Um, it's a really great feature. Um, that one is called um, Evernote. And it's, it's a little bit more robust version of Google Keep. Okay, our next area that we want to talk about is being a reliable, focused employee and managing your time well. And the first um, thing that I'm going to show you is an app that is called Stand Up the work break timer. And um, I think it's pretty well acknowledged that taking a break is a really important part of being able to focus and even being able to sit still at a desk. So an app that helps to remind you to stand up and walk around or go get a drink of water can be actually a really helpful thing to increase your productivity. And then the second one is called 3030, and it um, does that in a little bit of a different way. So I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the camera and start with the stand up. This one here. And what you're seeing here is the app where you set up um, how you want this to work. So I can choose which days I want. Um, I can choose the hours starting at what time to what time. So I can select the hours that I'm at work if I want to do that. And then um, I can also say how often. So kind of based on personal need, you know, it could be every 30 minutes. And um, while at any location or um, <clears throat> okay, so now it's giving me all these location um, alerts. So then I just um, do that, and it's going to bring up on my device every 30 minutes a reminder. Um, you can you can turn the sound louder. You can do other settings. You can change the notification message. Um, but now it's you can see it's starting and your next reminder would be in about 29 minutes. And so that's kind of nice because it's this really simple interface to use and it operates in the background and gives you that reminder um, at the frequency that you select in order to stand up and take a break. And then the next one is called 3030. It's this app up here, this icon in the corner here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. So here's a really um, basic one that has a 27 minute focus and then a reminder to take a stretch break and you just hit it and it starts. Um, but I'm going to show you the more um, involved one. And this has, so down here we have all the steps, so this is more of like a, a guide for um, an activity, so cleaning the break room. So 
there are minutes that are like the suggested amount of time that we expect this to take, so that could be a guidance for someone. And then um, I think I actually, yeah, I need to move it ahead here, not at the beginning. There we go. So that's the beginning. And so we've got the first thing that you do, so the timer starts, and there's the reminder about what to do first and the guided um, length of time that we expect it to take. And then you can see the whole screen turns that color. And so then if I get done with that task and I'm ready to move on to the next one, then I can hit this check mark at the top. And it takes me to my next step. Spray the tables with the cleaner. You can add time. If the tables were particularly messy this day, you can say, oh, I need a little bit more time. time um, and then move on to the next thing we have a break built in there and um, you can pause it go back come back and start again and let me just show you real quickly um, these are just really easy to create you type in whatever text you want you can choose a different color and you can change the amount of time. And you can choose a different icon to go with this. And then you also can move these around. Come on, wake up. There we go. Take that up there. on down through that. So that's one example of a routine that can be put into a structured format and then um, that an individual could follow along through. And that is called 30 slash 30. Okay, so the next um, item is something that is for the smartphone. It's called a Break Free. It's an app that I think it's called Break Free Stop Phone Addiction or something. Um, and let's see. Here it is. So um, w when we were thinking that especially for new people, young people entering the workforce, they are very accustomed to having their smartphones with them and often being on them and looking at them a lot. And so I thought of this as a really helpful um, kind of tool to have something that's going to track. And you can um, see here it's telling you how many times you've unlocked your screen and then actually tracking the amount of time that you've been on it for that day and then um, giving you an addiction score for what it's worth, and then um, weekly, monthly. So as you use it, you can see our stats are not very far yet. But as you use it, it will, you know, it can track your, your stats over time. So if this was something that you were trying to improve, maybe use my phone a little bit less um, during the day at work, then you could, you could track that. Um, so that's a really simple interface. There are other um, apps that are a little bit more complicated that do things like block certain websites or apps or things like that um, and track when you're doing what. But this is nice because it's just really simple and um, you can begin to track how you do use your phone. Okay, and then um, to gain awareness of how you use your time, there is an app that is, called, that is called Life Cycle. And this is actually um, created by the same people that did the Sleep Cycle one that we looked at in the beginning. And um, I'm just going to show you kind of an overview of this because, again, this would need to have a lot of data tracked in order to really show you how it works. Um, but life cycle automatically tracks what you do. So you need to have your, if you have your phone with you, your device with you, 
it tracks how you're spending your time, it tracks where you are, so it knows like if you're in Target, or it knows if you're at the coffee shop, and um, you can see here, you just keep it with you, and then it tracks how you're spending your time, and then you can see on these pie charts that it's showing you here, here's all the things that you did today, and I, I'm sure that you would go in and set it up and tell it like, you know, the location where you work. And, um, but a lot of it is based on GPS. And, um, and, and, and it syncs up with the Sleep Cycle app and doing the same kind of thing of assessing when you're asleep. And then it will also add, um, you know, additional information over the week and over the month. So this is a tool to really um, assess how you are spending your time and look at kind of the, your routines and kind of adding up the data and tracking it so that if you see, um, if you are in a new job and you see like, oh, I don't feel like I have any time to do anything, you know, it is kind of a, a useful thing to try and look at um, where you're spending your time. You know, maybe you're at the coffee shop way more hours during the week than you think you are. Um, and so it just gives you that power over making choices of how you're going to use your time. And that is called Life Cycle, tracks your time automatically. Okay, another thing for increasing your focus might be a white noise app. And um, I think sometimes in a work environment in particular, or when studying, um, just some really um, calming noise can be a really useful thing. And so this app is a really nice, um, simple um, for uh, putting in some headphones and listening to sounds that can be calming and that can really enhance your focus. And here, I'll turn this on. You can hear that, but this is like jungle sounds. And um, this can also be on your smartphone. It doesn't have to be on a device that you're working on will go away. There we go. And it has a, a nice visual, and then you can select different sounds. And so if there are things going on at work that are distracting and you need to really focus, then this can really be nice. And this can also be something that can um, help with anxiety. And there are, there are things that are actually white noise, like there is, um, there's fans in here and hair dryers, not just nature, cat purring. So there's a lot of choices about different sounds that you might find helpful. And that is called white noise. And that is a free app. Hmm. So the last thing I have as a tool for um, focus and managing your time well is an Apple Watch. Um, and so, um, yeah, go ahead. We're going to put this under the camera here. And um, what's nice about the watch is that, a little more. oh, sorry, okay, <laughs> there we go, um, is that you're wearing it, so it's not like your phone, it's on you all the time, and you can use, okay, um, I'm going to go to the settings, and so this has a way of notifying you, giving you reminders, or even notifying you of, um, you know, something to help you focus or take a break, any of those things. But it has a way of doing that without any sound. The sound is on right now, but then if I go down here, this is the um, radio. Let me focus that a little better. The haptic is what is like, it's, it's um, comparable to the vibrate on your phone, only it's a little bit stronger. It's like, um, it's like a tap on your wrist, essentially. And then I can set prominent haptics, so if I want it to be a little stronger, and there's the, 
the sound happening too, but it really is like a tap. And what's really nice is that that can be really discreet. So if you turn the sound off and you just have those taps, then that could be um, used in a, in a classroom or a work setting and other people don't have to know that you're using this type of a reminder. And so if I go back out here, there are a variety of different apps that work in um, hand in hand with your iPhone. And here's um, a timer. So these are just the built-in timer amount, amounts of time. You can also make a custom. And so if I um, want to remind myself to take a break in 30 minutes, I can do that. And then it will give me that little tap and nobody else has to know that that's happening, and then I can get up and take my break. So that is one of the, just the features that I, that I think is important to highlight on, the, on a wearable device like an Apple Watch. All right. So moving on, um, one of the other things, I, that's going to be, seems pretty obvious, um, but just to make sure we, we cover this, but uh, accessing the computer is going to be really important. Um, but there are lots of different ways to do that. And we're, we're going to look at some alternative keyboards and some adaptive mice, and by no means are we anywhere close to an exhaustive list here. We only have a couple for each, but there are so many different options out there. Um, just doing a simple search, a, a Google search for alternative keyboards and adaptive mice or checking out um, you know, some, some of our resources as well. But I'm going to bring up uh, an alternative keyboard first. And this particular one, um, get it on the camera here. So you'll see one of the things you first see is that the, um, the keys are very large. So, so that's the, the first part to begin with. They're also color-coded. And you'll notice the, all the vowels, you can't see the whole thing here, but the vowels are all in yellow, and, um, and, and some of the other more common letters are in different colors. But the thing that really stands out about this is the key guard. So you can kind of see it on here. It's this clear plastic thing, but you'll notice that um, the buttons, let me focus a little bit here. Um, the, the keys, then, are isolated. So um, it'll, it allows you to focus more on what keys you're pressing. You won't get as much um, of that skipping over and hitting multiple keys at once. It's going to be really helpful to, uh, for, for individuals who, who need that, that help isolating those individual keys. Um, so this is just a simple key guard. It's plexiglass over, over the top of it here. Um, and, and that can make all the difference in, in just simplifying that use of the keyboard. Um, but then the other keyboard that we have, I'm going to switch over here. This one might, might be a little bit more familiar with. You tend to see this a little bit more frequently. Um, but it's, it's your standard keyboard, um, except it's uh, laid out to be more ergonomical. So you can see how it raises up here. So it gives you a rest for your wrists on there to help with um, repetitive stress. Um, and you'll see the keys are even a little bit different. They kind of slope down a little bit on, the, on each side to make sure that your hands are, are in this optimal um, ergonomic um, uh, space there. And there's no buttons are different than, than a typical keyboard. It's just this design built right into it. And this is, you know, this is a, a relatively straightforward accommodation that an employer should have no problem supplying. Um, and so if this is something that's going to be a need, definitely um, bring that up to an employer. It should be no problem to, to have that done. If we go over to mice then, this one, um, it stands out a bit more than, than your, your typical mouse, but it can make all the difference. So one of the things you'll notice um, is it does have a trackball on it. So instead of um, having the typical mouse where it uses that sort of laser underneath to, to drag it around, you can move the cursor by just moving this trackball. Um, and then your left and right clicks are very discernible. They're very clear, very obvious. You're not going to get any confusion with the um, uh, index and ring finger. So you can very clearly see when you uh, which those buttons are. So that can make a, a really big difference for individuals. And um, on the handout, on the handout, you'll notice we also included a wireless trackpad. 
And a wireless trackpad is uh, essentially the trackpad you would find on a laptop, only it's wireless and you can use it for anything. So individuals who prefer trackpads, that's something you can use. But that's actually checked out of our library right now because it is a popular item, so we don't have it on display. Um, instead, I have this mini trackball. I know I'm going to take this, uh, perhaps take that tape off of there. Um, but what this is, it's you know, plugged in like a typical mouse, but it uses that same concept. Let me focus in here. That same um, trackball concept, um, this is what moves the cursor. And you have you know, your right and left clicks here or your left click underneath like a trigger. And this can make a really huge difference for individuals who maybe don't have that huge range of motion in their arms and just um, have a, a little bit of um, control here. And this can also make the difference, uh, a huge difference with clicking and dragging. So if you need to hold down the mouse, you hold the trigger and then you move the mouse like that. Um, so it, it really is something that you almost have to try out before you know if it's going to work for you, but um, it can make a, a really big difference for, for individuals. So that's just a mini trackball mouse is all, all that is referred to as. So those are just a handful of, um, well, really just a, a couple of different devices. Um, I just realized handful would have been a really good pun for me to use there, but um, the uh, adaptive mice and alternative keyboards, um, if that's something that you think is going to make all the difference for, for you or the individual you work with, um, you can definitely um, do, do a search for, for lots of other options that are out there. Okay, next we want to talk a little bit about appropriate behavior and social skills needed for the workplace. And I have a, a couple things to show you. The first is a um, quick cues. Quick cues is the one that we showed you earlier that was the communication about conversation. And um, I think I mentioned that they have different modules that um, you can buy. So I believe the different modules are $4.99 each. So there is a specific one that is about um, being on the job. And this isn't actually exactly where I want to be. Oh, ah. Go back. So with with oh, I'll bring it up here. I can show an example. Ah, oh, that is perfect. Example. Okay. All right. Now I've got it. Um. So. I'm going to zoom in a yeah. little bit so we can okay, see great. that. Okay. Great. So this is giving us an outline of the items that are on the on the on the job module. So all everything on this list here is what is um, included as categories for tips and cues for a person that um, needs that kind of guidance when they are on the job. And you know some of the things that we looked at um, earlier on the communication app are similarly helpful such as you know, how to communicate at work, what's appropriate to talk about. You can see there's body language on the job. Um, even how to ride mass transit, that's very helpful. Um, making a good impression with my coworkers. Um, manners, small talk at work. So all those things, and it is a similar um, layout of just like going, swiping through basic cues and tips um, for that given situation. So that, again, is quick cues, and this is the on-the-job module. And then the next thing is called Social Skills Pro. And this is set up, there are lessons, but there are also um, more like um, cues for conversation. Uh, let me open it up here. Here it is, Social Skills Pro. <clears throat> and this is operating under the assumption that there might be given um, topics that are like appropriate on um, you know, any given day for someone that you are 
um, interacting with. So you can put in here, like, so it has, oh, the start of the school year, and what did you do this summer, these kind of things. So you, could, you, can, you can change those. Here you can see that it's edit, and you can type in something else. So um, sort of like reminders, I guess. So you're on your way to work, and you can take a look at this, and like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to talk to my coworkers about? And um, you can put, you know, the football game last night, or um, what did you do this weekend, that kind of thing. Um, and then down here is lessons. Um, we'll just open overview. And so it's giving us some basic tips and uh, information. And um, let's see. So we go on down here. We can say um, pretty specific to um, conversations, you know, how to be an active listener, how to end the conversation. Example of a bad exit. Okay, I have to go. Or give exit cues. So um, all kinds of things that kind of boost and help people that need that support with social skills. Um, and then we have humor, texting. That ought to be interesting. <clears throat> so best practices. Hopefully it says, is it OK to text your boss with a bunch of emojis? And it'll say, not so appropriate. Um, yeah, so conflict resolution is down here. So that's kind of nice. And then um, there's another section down here that is just called lists. And this one, you can enter in things. So you could be at home, or you could have another person um, giving you support with this. And um, uh, so here's, oh, wait, I don't want to do that. Topics, um, work or school, how their day was. And then when you open one of these, then you can edit it, and you can add more information. Um, you could add, like, a sample question, or you could add a sample response. So if you wanted to have something prepared to say, uh, when someone says, how was your weekend? You might want to have something ready um, that you can review on your way into work. Oh, this is the thing that I want to you know, talk about in case I don't remember anything I did on the weekend. <laughs> um, and so you can see there's a long list. There's music. Um, and so that's just to start out with one example, but you can add you can add more and create a list of things that you could go back and and look at. So that is a support for social skills that can be useful at the workplace. All right. So moving on, um, the next things that we're going to look at are all about following directions. Uh, when you're on the job, especially if you're brand new to the job, brand new to the environment, following directions can be really, really difficult. Um, so we have two different things. Um, we have an app um, called Recordium, and we'll also take a look at a device uh, known as the uh, LiveScribe Echo Smart Pen. I want to start with the app. If you haven't seen these two uh, uh, devices that we're going to look at before, um, I, I don't know if I can adequately describe how amazing they are. <laughs> in, in particular, I really like them. I'm going to switch over to uh, the camera again to look at Recordium. And um, let me, where did Recordium go? Oh, there it is, right there. Um, so how this works, I'm going to rotate this here so we can see. Um, I, that's OK. I'm going to back up just a little bit. Um, and I'll focus on this. So it's a really easy um, user interface. Um, you have these different folders that you can categorize things, but basically it's a recording app. It's used to, to rec you can use it to record a meeting, um, a lecture if you're in school, um, you want, um, instructions from a supervisor, whatever that happens to be. But how it works is you hit record, and it is now recording everything that it is hearing. And, um, what is a little bit different than this than some of the other um, maybe note-taking apps is it allows you to stay completely engaged in the conversation. And once you hear something that's really important, you just go hit this tag, important, 
and it marks that point in time when that, the instructor or your supervisor said something really important. If they start giving you instructions, you can hit highlight, and you keep it highlighting well step by step by step the instructions are being described, and then you can turn that off. Um, you can even take a picture of something that they're describing, and we'll add that to the timeline. But here's where it becomes a little different. When I'm done recording these instructions or this lecture or this meeting, whatever it is, I could save this. And when I come back and play back this recording, I can skip to the important part. Or I can skip to the instructions that were being given. And that's a great way to uh, allow you to essentially take notes without having to be distracted by taking notes. It's a way to mark the really important parts in the conversation um, and very rapidly go back and review them. It can be really helpful for doing things quickly um, and, and making sure you're, um, you're capturing all the things that you need. And even if you forget to do these tags, you still have the item recorded so you can listen back to the entire recording. So that one is called Recordium. Um, the next thing we're going to look at then um, is uh, another a note-taking device. This is actually um, involved in note-taking specifically. Let me uh, focus on here. So this is known as the, the LiveScribe um, Echo. It's a smart pen. And what that means is it works with these notebooks here, these specialized notebooks. And if I turn this on, um, what's built into this pen is actually another audio recorder. There's a microphone built in. And the camera underneath this can actually tell where on this page it is. And so when I press the pen to the record, you may not have been able to hear that beep, but it is now recording everything that is being said. And so um, if you're being given instructions, and maybe note-taking is a challenge for you. Maybe you have dysgraphia. Maybe um, you aren't able to necessarily uh, pay as enough attention as you'd like to, or you just can't write fast enough. They say, oh, this thing is really important. You can just say important. Um, OK, they've said something important. Um, or you can do a star or a check mark or any type of doodle that you really want. And when, what gets really cool then is when the instructions are done, the meeting's done, the lecture's done, you come down here and you press the pen to stop. And now when it's time to go back and review those, you don't have to listen to the whole recording. You just want to listen to what was being said when you wrote down this star. So I press the pen to this. And it starts back at that point that you wrote that note. So it allows you um, a little more freedom in your note taking. You don't have to write as much details down. You just get something written when something important is being said, and then you're able to come back and review that just by pressing your pen to that particular item. And it looks like I, I popped that in there. Um, so that is called the Live Scribe Echo. It's a smart pen. Um, it's become really it's a really popular device, um, and it is great for assisting with with note taking. And um, moving on from there, um, taking a picture with your phone is something that is really simple and that we don't necessarily think of doing um, in this kind of a setting. But if a supervisor is giving instructions or particularly has like an item, like I want this file or this folder to be organized in this exact way and look like this when it's done, and you need to reproduce 10 of these, then that would be an ideal situation to like take a picture of exactly what they have and then go back and, and put those together. Or take a picture of written instructions that are on a whiteboard or something. So then you can take it back with you and you can review it um, and refer to it as many times as you want. Um, and I have uh, another app to show you that is um, a nice way to break a task into smaller steps. So it's a little bit different than a to-do list um, because we can use this to um, take a larger task and break it down into small tasks. We'll get it open here. Is it in here? Okay. <clears throat> and this, um, this is called Trello. 
And it's this icon up here. There we go. I'm going to turn this the other direction. It works a little better that way. Um, and Trello is um, a free app that is also syncs across different devices. So this can be on an iPad. Um, you can open it on your phone. You can open it on your, on your desktop computer. And so here's um, the first one I have um, set up. And you can see that what you do, so you create a project, or so that's clean the break room. And then you create, and I'll show you that in a little more detail in a minute, you create these different lists. And so this one is used as what you do first, what you do next, what you do last. And here we also have pictures. So again, you can find a picture online. That's what I did here, like a mop. Or you can use um, to give very specific, detailed instructions, if that's what you need to do. And then um, over here we have check your work, and then we have a completed place. So if this is that is useful, we say, oh, okay, so I mopped the floor, that's done, whoops, and I can take it and put it over here, and it's completed. And then um, you can see any of these. You can add another layer of notes, so put garbage in trash can, put in recycling, and then the items that you put in the recycling as another little reminder. broken down step by step. And then um, another uh, setup that I have here that I did not use um, the visual pictures for is like a construction project. So here's the things that I need to do first. Here's the things on this project that I would do next, the final steps, the follow-up. And then similarly, I could take these and move them over when they're completed, which is nice because then you can have everything there and you can slide it all back and start over again when on your next project. And to add something else, um, it's just really easy. So here's how we add a new list. So is that there's a new list. And then um, you can add a card. They call them cards. So you can just click on that and add another card. And um, add on down. And you can also move them from one spot to another. Um, so it's a really easy uh, interface to use. And it's a nice way to break steps down uh, for any kind of project. And that is called Trello. And, and you can see that you can change the colors. And you can, it has other features like you can add reminders, you can add dates. And we actually just had a question come up asking what this stand is that we're using, that we're holding the uh, iPad on. Um, and it's, it's a, a tablet stand for the Apple iPad. It's, uh, the manufacturer is Cantec, Inc., K-A-N-T-E-K. -E and I'll have Bridget can type that in there. Um, but it's um, pretty, pretty straightforward setup, but it does, I like it because it allows you to rotate it really easily. You can tilt it different ways too and spin it around and change it from landscape to portrait. Um, and, and that's, um, that too could be very useful. It's something that could be on your desk. Um, we, we didn't include it in the presentation, but I'm glad someone asked about it. It is another great device that, that we use a lot, of, a lot of times for our presentation. So it's just, a, a, just the name is just a generic tablet stand for Apple iPad, uh, but it's made by Cantec Inc. K-N-T-E-K um, Inc. I-N-C. So thank you for the question. Keep them coming. We love questions. Oh, okay. And then um, another app is iTranslate. So there are a lot of different translation um, tools on the market, 
but this one I find it works pretty well, and it's nice because it is on a mobile device, so that um, for someone that needs to, um, if English is their second language, or you need to translate something, um, there we go. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> so it's a really um, straightforward setup here, and I can go to English. So if I want to give instruction to someone, and I want to make sure, and Spanish is their first language, and I want to make sure that they understand. Um, and this might be a useful thing to do. Okay. So, um, I can read it. You must read and sign the contract. But then I can also tell it to translate it. And it gives a verb conjugation information down here. Um, and then I can also do this so that they can hear the message. And obviously I'm trusting that it's giving a reasonable um, translation. But usually when it's in their language, then they can kind of get the idea, if, even if it's not perfect translation. And I'm not sure my internet is going to allow me to let this speak the Spanish. But, um, um, but that's how that works. And let's go here, and we can see um, all the 91 languages that it has. So in any given um, work environment or um, location where you have um, people where English is not their first language, it might be useful to have a tool like this ready um, for you to use and interacting with them or for them to use when they are um, getting instructions. So that is I translate. Right. So then um, our last category related to the work environment is learning new skills. And this is something that can be done in many ways. And we have a variety of tools to show you um, in our last section here. And I'm going to start with an app that is called Can Plan. Mm -hmm. And um, some of these are, you know, we don't have real elaborate examples set up, but I think it gives you an idea of what it can do. So um, this is set up, again, for something to have a visual reminder, and it will also speak. So um, this is washing clothes. And again, the picture, you know, can be really specific to that person's own environment. Um, I like how detailed this is. And you're creating those Press images, right? Press normal casual setting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it will speak the text. And I think this kind of thing is really helpful. So, you know, if it is like a washing machine, you know how complicated and overwhelming all those buttons and directions can be. So you take a picture and say, this is exactly what you do. And that app is called Can Plan. Yeah, and these are all um, newly added. Down here you see Add Text. You add your new item, you type in the text, you take the photos, and you set it up. And then the next one is actually a video modeling app. So it's kind of similar, but um, using video, and here, again, these are um, videos that you take, and it's got a really nice, um, simple format to create this. So you take little videos, and then um, you, can, you, can, you take the video and you can accept it, or you can do it over again, and um, then they're just played. Um, so, a specific task with specific steps and um, illustrating exactly how it is done. Again, all the buttons, what to choose, which one to push. Um, so, just to give you an idea of how that works. That is called, that app is called Master Task. 
And then I've got um, learning a new language, um, an app that is called Memrise, M-E-M-R-I-S-E. -E. And it's got a, a fun, um, playful um, sort of format. And um, takes you through, and I don't, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but it basically takes you through and teaches you um, basic words, and then it um, goes through and quizzes you, and it has, um, gives you little quizzes, and it also shows you videos of people speaking, and um, so it's got a really nice, and I think it's built on like 10 minutes a day to learn a new language. Um, so it's, it's kind of fun. And then I want to mention just that there are a lot of um, programs that are specific to uh, work career areas. So um, just one example would be like the healthcare profession. Um, so people that are maybe working as a health assistant. Um, might be wanting to study and learn and develop their skills in order to prepare for um, higher level of jobs. And so this is the app. This, is, this one is called Nursing Central. And um, this is a free version. Of course, they want you to buy and get all the more features. But here we've got um, something that is basically a medical dictionary. And um, here's like all the illustrations. So it's quite robust. There's a lot of things in there. Um, I don't know what that is. I'll click on that. Um, so illustrations, basic information. Um, back out of there. And that is just one little section of this app. There's, there's um, a lot of other definitions and um, Things you can look up. There's a there's a pharmacy like a medication dictionary, um, conditions, and all that kind of thing. So that was called Nursing Central. So, so the last thing here for learning new skills, um, if you haven't heard about it, it's a website called ConAcademy.org. Con is spelled K-H-A-N. It's it's after the guy who created Selen Con, um, and there is an app that comes with it, and I think I'll bring up that app so you can see it, but the website works just as well, so you can go straight to, to conacademy.org and test it out. Um, most people who've heard of Khan Academy are probably familiar with its ability, uh, with its um, math features, so mathematics at all different levels. So if you'll notice, it also has science, economics, um, and also computer science. Um, it has test prep options, and, and the list kind of goes on, college, careers, and more. So the way this is set up, um, it's, it's definitely worth checking it out. It's completely free. It has video tutorials, and the guy who does them is pretty darn good at it, and it also has activities to test and, and practice the knowledge that you learn. It does go through every single level of math that you can come up with and many, many levels of science. Um, but computer science is potentially a really uh, powerful one to do, as well as just basic personal finance and understanding of careers. So definitely check it out. There is a free app. Uh, you can also use the website, conacademy.org. Uh, and that's just one of those things um, to assist you in learning new skills, because um, that is one way to increase your, um, your productivity, independence, and ultimately be better on the job. So um, that brings us to the end. Um, I want to make sure that everybody is utilizing that chat window and asking questions. <laughs> um, there is also a workshop handout that you should be able to access under the um, Adobe Connect files. Um, the handout does have a little more information about the apps and the tools that we've showed today, including um, links to um, websites, so that's nice to have that electronically.
And um, I, I did see a question about a certificate of attendance. Um, we have a survey here. Um, if you fill out this survey for us, it would be greatly appreciated, but it will also provide you a link to a certificate of participation once you complete that. Uh, the link there um, has just been added. You can see it's a survey monkey link. Um, you can click on it right up in sort of the middle of the screen right here. Um, it will take you to that survey. We really, really appreciate any feedback you can give us. And of course, that certificate of participation will be available to print out um, at the end of that survey. So thank you again um, for uh, coming here and uh, joining us and learning about assistive technology. Um, if you have any further questions, um, definitely uh, check out ctdinstitute.org for the Center on Technology and Disability. Um, and my name is Paul. And my name is Sarah. And thank you very much.